All right, now here, check this out. Normally we're in a restaurant park, but this, John Moles Meats Roadkill Grill, and it, it takes a lot to say that. This place, as you can see, I got some tri-tip from the cook, but come on over here for a second. First of all, we got a great guest. Everybody knows the Las Vegas Speedway and the strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Jeff Motley is gonna be our guest, who's a longtime Las Vegas in person, and we're gonna, we're gonna grill you a little bit on, no pun intended, on, this, on Vegas and where are some of the cool spots to go and what are some of the things to do behind the scenes. But have you ever been here, first of all? I have not, which is amazing. 24 and a half years living here, my first time. So thanks for bringing me somewhere new. Now, as you can see, we're not in the kitchen. We're not even in the restaurant part. We are actually back behind this place. And from what we've heard, cars line up down the street, like way down the street. So I think we hit it big with this place. Well. We met Chuck, the cook, now, and, and I can't tell you how heavy this is. I mean, the yams, the uh, mac and cheese, the ribs, the tri-tip. Wow. I bet the tires on your car don't weigh Dude, as much as that plate of that's food. That's like seven pounds. So you might have seen this place on the Food Channel, the Travel Channel. It's been on quite a few. And apparently Chuck, the cook, is fifth generation from... John Mull. Born in the house next door to the place right here. Yeah, and driving here, we literally were going through neighborhoods. Like I, We're I, in a neighborhood. Yeah. We are actually in a neighborhood. There's yeah. somebody's house, like right, right there on the other side of it. And, and they say, you know, at certain times of the year, the lines down the street. I'm sure the neighbors love that. Well, let's back up a little bit. So my guest, of course, Jeff Motley with Las Vegas Motor Speedway, also the strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Um, we try to basically Last year we did it with wings. This year it's Q&A with caps and it's all barbecue. The fans want to know where the, the spots to go. Where do they go eat? Where do teams go eat and hang out when they're not at the racetrack? And so we're trying to give them an, a little feel. But at the same time, this has grown into what's the cool spots? Well, this one's out in the middle of nowhere. And you've lived here a long time and you haven't even been here. Which tells me, A, you need to get out a little more often. <laughs> and B, it, it uh, it's hidden. It is hidden, there's no question. It's a little far from where I actually live, and it is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, a little far from the speedway, really, too, because we come here for lunch if we could. Well, when I posted I was coming here, I can't believe how many people not in Las Vegas posted how awesome this place was and how there's one guy that said he actually orders and ships sausages out to where he lives on the East Coast. So It's the magic of Guy Fieri's diners, drive-ins, and dives sometimes. Yep. That gets you a little bit of... A lot. Attention here, and you know he's a UNLV grad. Oh, I didn't so know he loves coming to Las Vegas and picking places here. I bet. All right, so we're going to start off. I got some questions I want to ask you. Things that you like. Same time. I trust you. Oh, I wouldn't trust me. I I love barbecue. In oh. fact, uh, oh man, Chuck is. I just cut right into your food. I just cut right into your food. We're good. Man we we want. No, yeah. we want you to cut into that. It got quiet because. Oh my god. Uh, the, the 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 cook and the owner. Chuck just made an appearance, and you can't see him on camera, but he is unleashing okay, what, we, what we mean, radio. the brontosaurus I want to get my hat. Look at that rib. And we joked about it being something out of the Flintstones, but look at that. There is a reason this and place has a line of cars out front. Dude, that is awesome. Thank you. Oh, you Chuck, thank you. This thank is amazing. You. Well, we met Chuck, the cook. Now... And, and I can't tell you how heavy this is. I mean, the yams, the uh, mac and cheese, the ribs, the tri-tip. Wow. I bet the tires on your car don't weigh Dude, as much as that plate of that's food. It's like seven pounds. So you might have seen this place on the Food Channel, the Travel Channel. It's been on quite a few. And apparently Chuck the Cook is fifth generation from John Mole. Born in the house next door to the place right here. Yeah, and driving here, we literally were going through neighborhoods. Like I, We're I, in a neighborhood. Yeah. We are actually in a neighborhood. It's somebody's yeah. house, like right, right there on the other side of it. And, and they say, you know, at certain times of the year, the lines down the street. I'm sure the neighbors love that. Well, let's back up a little bit. So my guest, of course, Jeff Motley with Las Vegas Motor Speedway, also the strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Um, we try to basically, last year we did it with wings. This year it's Q&A with caps and it's all barbecue. The fans want to know where the, the spots to go. Where do they go eat? Where do teams go eat? and hang out when they're not at the racetrack. And so we're trying to give them an, a little feel, but at the same time, this has grown into what's the cool spots. Well, this one's out in the middle of nowhere, and you've lived here a long time, and you haven't even been here, which tells me, A, you need to get out a little more often, <laughs> and B, it, it uh, it's hidden. 
it is hidden. There's no question. It's a little far from where I actually live, and it is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, a little far from the speedway, really, too, because we come here for lunch if we could. Well, when I posted I was coming here, I can't believe how many people not in Las Vegas posted how awesome this place was and how there's one guy that said he actually orders and ships sausages out to where he lives on the East Coast. So it's the magic of Guy Fieri's diners, drive-ins, and dives sometimes yep. that gets you a little bit of a lot. attention here. And you know he's a UNLV grad, oh, I didn't so know he loves coming to Las Vegas and picking places here. I bet. All right, so we're going to start off. I got some questions I want to ask you. At the same time, we're going to dig in. Are you a barbecue guy, per se? I, I love barbecue. In oh. fact, uh, oh, man. Chuck is... I just cut right into your food. I just cut right into your food. No, we want you to cut into that. It got quiet because oh my God. Uh, the, the, the cook and the owner, Chuck just made an appearance, and you can't see him on camera, but he is on YouTube. Okay, I've got the we, perfect we face in radio. The brontosaurus I want to get my hat. Look at that rib. And we joked about it being something out of the Flintstones, but look at that. There is a reason this and place has a line of cars out front. Dude, that is awesome. Thank you. Oh, you guys so good. Chuck, For thank sure. you. This thank is amazing. You. Holy shit. Alley cat. Shit. That's from Alley cat. Alley cat. Yeah. Alley cat. <laughs> See how quiet it gets when the cook so shows up? Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, so barbecue guy? Yes, I grew up in southwestern Virginia. You know, the Carolina, Virginia sweet, barbecue, sweet barbecue, a little bit of the vinegar, yeah. vinegar based sauce, pulled pork is kind of, you know, my thing growing up back there as a kid. Spicy? I don't mind it being a little spicy. I'm good with that. But this, you know, it's a really thin vinegar based you sauce. You know, I grew up in Martinsville, Virginia. I've got a couple of little places that have been there literally since I was a little kid that I go back there now. I still go back to those barbecue places and get food. Now, in case you don't know at home, we got a group of racetracks we go to owned by the same group of people started by Bruton Smith it, that includes Sonoma Las Vegas Bristol and Z-Max I get them all you got them all I got them all so you hear us brag about those racetracks uh, here lately actually since the pandemic I know a lot of you have kind of floated around they've got you guys working all those different tracks but uh, I'm gonna pop some questions your way while we eat the barbecue on just some Vegas stuff okay some some questions that uh, Cass and Allie put together and uh, we're looking for an insight for our fans, and perhaps me and my friends. Okay. So next time we come to Vegas, my brother does live here, but he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't share this kind of stuff with me very often. So, all right, we're gonna dig in first. Beef rib, right? Is that? Uh, have you gotten into that one? Yet? I don't have that one. I've got the. Well, I've got the uh, tri tip and the. Uh, oh, the tri tip is so good. And the burnt end. Yes. All right. Question oh, number oh, one. And this is an important one for our fans. Best place for a pre-race breakfast. Now, a lot of my friends might just be coming in from the night out and heading to breakfast before they go to the track. But what is the place that you recommend that's, that's the place to go hit if you're gonna fly out here for a weekend of the drag races and hit a breakfast? The Pepper Mill. Pepper Mill. Without question. The Pepper Mill is on the Strip, just north of the Encore. So it's kind of in, the, when you get it a little bit in toward the old part of Vegas, it's, it's, it's south of the Sahara, north of Wynn and Encore. It's open 24 hours. Um, you see these big portions of barbecue we're eating? Well, you go in there and order an omelet, it would fill up this entire yeah, right. plate. Um, the size of the portions there, now look, the only, the only drawback is sometimes if you don't get there early, you might be waiting a little while because it is a, a great place to go. And, in the, in the, and look, if you wanna go there for the really early breakfast or the really late breakfast, they have this lounge in there called the Fireside Lounge that's open all night long. So you can go in there, have your breakfast and a cocktail, and get your Bloody Mary in there if you wow. want to. Um, but the Pepper Mill pregame breakfast, that's the place you got to go. Something about the name Pepper Mill oozes old school. Just the name. I don't even know what it is. And it is old school. It has been there for quite some time. All right. How about where do you go for the best view of the strip? Not counting a helicopter. I think it kind of depends on which. Um, which view of the strip you want. Um, personally, I think going to the foundation room on top of Mandalay Bay yeah, is, is an unbelievable view to look north. Um, now, it used to be private, but now it's not so private, right? Yeah, I think there's. I think anybody can get up there depending on the time of day. I don't know if anybody can eat dinner up there, but I think you can get up there at different times. Well, I dropped your name and I got right up there. Okay, well, I'm glad that worked then. And then I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did something while you were up there. Maybe. You know, and you want to see the other side, you can go to the stratosphere, you know. But the stratosphere to me is, 
so high up, it's almost too high. Yeah. Um, there is a new place called the Legacy Club that is on top of Circa in downtown Las Vegas that has a beautiful view looking back the other way. You can see the whole valley from there, but it's not as high up like the stratosphere is. So that's a cool view. And I guess probably the other place is if you go up on top of the Palms Hotel, I don't know what they call it, the Ghost Bar, yeah, I think. Yeah. I'm not a big nightclub guy. It's got guy, the little so ledge you can walk out on. Right, but, but there you see that panoramic view of the strip. You know, and it's also kind of cool sometimes if you actually just go out on the west side of town where you can just see the whole valley because the way the, the valley slopes, the farther west you go, the higher up you go. So you can be in the parts we call it Summerlin, and you can be anywhere from 3,000 to 3,200 feet above sea level, and the strip itself is like 2,000 feet above sea level. So you can get a panoramic view of the whole city. It's quiet out there. It can be very quiet out there, and there's a lot of good places uh, to, to go eat out there. Right? This leads to my next question. Fremont Street or the Strip? Wow, I think it depends on what you want to do. Um, I'm asking you, it, Jeff Molly. Well, it depends on what no. I want to do. Maybe I should put it that way. Like, about, look, obviously. What would what would 22-year-old Jeff Motley do? 22-year-old Jeff Motley would definitely go to the Strip. 55-year-old okay. Jeff Motley would go Fremont. downtown. Fremont. I, number one, it's easier to park downtown yeah. um, there's some amazing places to both go eat for entertainment you got there's always free concerts and we do our fan fest sometimes do our fan fest in the fall in the fall in the fall we do the yeah. fan fest there on Fremont Street it's, packed. it's always yeah. great crowd they built some and the Golden Nugget has gotten so nice down there Circa going in down yeah. there um, you know, now they got all these little outdoor yeah. bars that yeah. you can go to along Fremont Street. So, and they, and by far the best people watching wow. to sit at one of the little bars and just sit there and watch Fremont Street and people watch. You might even see Batman and Wonder Woman <laughs> like down there too. Uh, but I guess I kind of like downtown. But unless I want to go to some an event, like I'm going to a hockey game or a show. You know, the shows yeah. are on the strip, the hockey the strip. games on the strip. But if it's just like I, I've got to pick one of those two to go out at night or a night out for dinner or something yeah. like that. I'm going downtown Fremont Street. Okay. Uh, pork or beef ribs? Pork all day long. Pork. I heard you say that when we ordered. Why? I'm a southern boy. That's kind of okay. what we grew up in was on pork ribs. It's people in Texas and Kansas City and places like that, we just call that beef. We don't call that barbecue. You drink sweet tea, don't you? I love sweet tea. In fact, my mother, when I was a kid, <laughs> my mom and dad would do sun tea. Yeah. So you put the water in the jug yep. on the back porch, you put the tea bags in there, and then, of course, then she's putting that whole big scooper of sugar yeah. in it. So, and then you, and she put it out there in the morning. We come home from school or whatever, and we had a big gallon jug of sweet So what tea. do you do? You got places where I hear you order sweet tea, or do you just dump a bunch of sugar in your tea? No, I, I don't do that. No? I, 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 yeah, honestly, be honest with us. I don't drink a ton of iced tea. Oh. So I really don't. I don't drink a lot of caffeine. Other than putting some Diet Coke in my Crown Royal, that's about the extent of caffeine for me now. I will say though, when Are I was you sponsored a kid, by them, uh, no, but it is it is it is my go-to. <laughs> they should they should send me free samples. Well, that's one of my questions. All right, this is one I've been wanting to know. Best Old Vegas throwback restaurant. Hmm. Very easy. Now I'm picturing like the old booths, the old. You know, you that one is a layup. Golden Steer. Golden Steer. It's on Sahara. Um, it's been there, I think, opened in 1958. Um, I think the main dining room looks very similar to the way it looked in 1958. I agree. Uh, so I do love that place. So the Golden Steer would definitely be the throwback. Last time we went in there, we had about 27 people in our group. And the waitress took our order without a pad, took every person's order, I went back and repeated everybody's order back to them. Baked potato, mashed potato, whatever. She got everything right. Not one thing wrong. 27 people. Well, I'm glad she got it right because I'm one of those people, when I go to a restaurant, I am not impressed that you take the order down and don't write it down. I don't care if you write it down. Believe me, it is not going to affect my tip if you write that order down. I I just, I would rather people write it down. They were best at the table. She probably won 500 bucks out of our group. There, there was no way we thought she was going to pull it off. It was impressive. All right. Best speakeasy. Oh, I think that one. Well, gosh, you know. You're gonna go barbershop, aren't you? No, I'm gonna say the Mob Museum. Oh, really? So the Mob All Museum, right. underneath the Mob Museum, there is a speakeasy. I didn't know that. And you have to know the password to get in. You know it? Well, the password changes daily, oh. but they post it on their website. Oh. 
So you go to their website every day and they'll tell you what the password is for the day. And I don't know if they've ever actually turned people away to tell you yeah. the truth, but that's kind of the cool thing and you can go on the website. Um, so that one is, is really cool. And then I think they've and changed. The Mom Museum is, if I'm not downtown. mistaken, right near Main, about Fremont it, it, Street. Correct. It's not about far. a block off Fremont Street. It, it was actually like the original post office like yeah. 100 years ago. I've driven by the, it. They wanted to go. Yeah, now it, I know. It's it a is, speakeasy. It is definitely. Well, the, the Mom Museum is upstairs. The speakeasy, you go around the side and down the set of stairs like you're going into an old cellar or something like that, and it's underneath. So, All right, the fall race. We're going to have the... Fan Fest, and then we're all going to go over to the speakeasy and the mob. I'm in. I'm in. I'll, right. I'll come with you. Okay. We're going to come up with a password. Those fans that know the password come with us. All right. How about uh, best pizza in Vegas? First of all, do you have the burnt ends? I have. I've got some of those right here. They're quite good. You guys, I think we might, this might be tough to beat. This is going to be low qualifier for a while. Uh, again, let me just show you a beef rib. I don't want to get it all over. Look at that. I'm trying to figure out now if I could just travel the circuit with you guys and eat lunch with you on Thursday. Dude, I'm going to be 300 pounds before we get to Bristol. <laughs> all right. Best, oh. best pizza. My personal favorite, um, I think there's two locations in Vegas. It's called Rocco's. Um, now, it's a New York style pizza place. I like it because they use real hamburger. Because I'm a meat guy on my pizza. Like, give me some pepperoni and some hamburgers. You like some ground sausage. beef on your pizza? Yes. Love oh, ground beef on my right. pizza. Um, is that your number one topping? Gosh. We're diving deep in the We are diving deep. Pizza. Pizza. But I, you know, I don't want vegetables or fruit on my pizza. I'll just put meat on my pizza. So I don't really care what meat you put on there. Rockers. I don't I don't want I don't want peppers, I don't want onions, and I sure as heck don't want pineapples on my pizza. Yeah, so I might have to break up with you. Right? I don't, I don't and, and I'm also a thin crust guy. I don't care yeah, for that too. Chicago deep dish stuff. Yeah. I mean the thinner the better. In fact, you know, we've got a place downtown, but I think it might be a chain called Pizza Rock. But they have this thing, it's called a cracker crust. And it is literally as thin as a cracker. It's crunchy. I actually kind of like that. But yeah. but I think for a local's place, Rocco's would be the Rocco's. place I would go. There you go. Best pizza in Vegas. You heard it here. All right. Best non-strip attraction. Like if you're going to have somebody come in and you want to show them a good time. I don't mean a good time like that, Jeff. But you know what I mean. You want to show somebody a touristy spot. What's the best attraction you would take them to? Wow. Um, I guess it's kind of hard to pass up when it comes to something to see that is awe-inspiring and going to the Hoover Dam. The Hoover, Hoover Dam in, in terms of that, but, but I think if it's really more just get outside and recreation or whatever. How far drive is that? Hoover Dam is probably 30, 35 oh, minutes. close? So it's, it's really close. Um, in fact, you fly right over it as you're making your approach See, into the been. into the airport. No, I know. I've seen it, but so, I've never been. I need to go. Yeah, so about 30, 35 minutes down there. And, and if you like the outside nature, uh, Red Rock Canyon. Red Rock Canyon is cool. And, and I think the other place, and just because I think everybody should go there and at least have a drink, is the Pioneer Saloon. It's about 30, 40 miles outside of town. became legendary when... Um, Carol Lombard's plane crashed on the side of Mount Potosi, and Clark Gable, would, every day, would go up and look on the mountain, trying to find the plane, trying to find her, and then he would come back every night, and he would sit at the Pioneer Saloon and basically just drink himself till he could go to sleep and get up the next morning, and he'd do it all over again. And he did this for days and for weeks, and the Pioneer Saloon is still there. Um, I hear and a lot it's, of uh, my motorcycle friends. Right? And it is. It's kind of a biker bar, but it's more of a... It's not like a rough biker bar. It's kind of like, you know, the, the yuppies that ride motorcycles kind of thing. Yeah. So, but I think that's kind of place that everybody should go there once. Well, that's the questions that I got. Uh, appreciate you joining us. And I'm sure you're going to be back here, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm come back in the fall. Here. I'm coming in a day early. To Maybe back here sooner rather than later. Now, four white. Do you like, I know you got to put up with all the stuff going on the track. Do you like the four wide as a spectator? I do. Um, Good answer. No, I, I like it because it's just, you don't see it every day. You know, I've seen a lot of drag races and we run too wide in the fall, but it's something we get to do a little bit different. That's why I tell people. You know, I think, you know, people in different kind of sports, they have different kind of tracks they race on. Okay, wait. 
you were around when the dra drag strip was built. You were around here. I, I was here before it was built. Do you remember the first time you heard Bruton or somebody mention building the drag strip? Building the drag strip? Yeah. My next question is, the first time you said we're going to have four lanes, we're only going to put two down right now because fans don't know that the actual first four wide was Vegas. Just had dirt over it. You didn't know it. But if anybody looked closely. There's half a tower. You notice there's half a tower now. And if you look at where our scoreboards are right now, we never moved the scoreboards. Oh, yeah. So the scoreboard that. on the on the right hand side was already offset to accommodate the four lanes. So I mean, I remember we our drawings probably somewhere around the office. I probably still have the drawings from 1999 that showed a four lane drag. Yeah. Wow. Everybody probably went what? It I was coming. Uh, Don Perdome. I just started working for him, and I was in a taxi cab with him and Mario Andretti. The first time ever being around Mario. And we took a taxi cab out to where the site was going to be, the drag strip. And Snake had heard rumors. And we got out and walked around the gravel. And I thought, man, if they build a drag strip here, I, I couldn't even imagine it. And then, next thing you know, it was built. And there we were. Was this before Bruton bought it or after? Oh, I didn't even know Bruton didn't own it. Oh, that's right. We had the conversation. Interesting story. Richie Klein was the guy who built the track. And he had the idea of running an HRA. So when they built the speedway, they built the concrete for the seating area. But NHRA would not guarantee a date. So Richie stopped building the drag strip. So all he had was this, basically the shell of the concrete grand strip. That was it. And then once Bruton bought the track, I remember it was my, literally, my first week working here. January 1999. I'd never seen a drag race in my life. Chris Powell, our track president, he goes, we're going to drive over to Pomona on whatever day, like on Thursday, I think it was, Thursday or Friday. So we drive over to Pomona to go and meet with a few people over there, Dallas Gardner, Wally Parks, that group, and basically talk about getting the drag race. So we go, you guys tell us we're going to have a drag race, we'll build the drag strip. And you know, it rained the whole day. So here I've never been to an NHRA event. I go for one day over there, and I still never saw a car <laughs> go down the racetrack. But we came back, we had the commitment from NHRA, started putting plans in place to uh, to build the drag strip, and we actually had the press conference, I believe it was around July of that of 1999, big tent out where the start, where the tower is now. We did the press conference out there. The rest is history. Sort of yeah, we went four lane about five or six years ago. Well, there you have it. I know a lot of you fans have been out to this racetrack. It's a destination. If you haven't, uh, I get asked all the time, pick a race for somebody to come to. What better track than Las Vegas? I mean, whether it's NASCAR, it's short track, uh, World Outlaws, dirt track. Um, but the drag strip is, it's a sight to see. It's a great, it, I always tell people it's a place I would take my mom because it is built with nice bathrooms, concrete everywhere. It's not a lot of dirt and gravel. And, it's just a nice place. And it's always been that way. And that's, I think, uh, is what's always made it nice for the fans. Well, and we're proud of it. And it, it, and I think it validates it for us to hear guys like you, you know, say that. And we hear that from our fans. We hear it from our competitors. And in addition to the Speedway, um, what better town yeah. for <clears throat> for sports, for motorsports, for entertainment, for dining? You got it all. And it's not too far out of town. I literally, when minutes, we won the race last year, the four wide, our team manager picked up a lot of our corporate people from Napa, and I Ubered to the track on race day morning and got out at the gate with fans and walked right in the gate and took an Uber from the Sahara. So it's not far from downtown. Yeah, you Ubered out for our NASCAR race this year. I did that too. Yes, I did. Well, there you have it. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Um, this Absolutely. is the keeper. This place, I, I, I uh, like I said. I don't know how much of this I'll get through, but. <laughs> we're going to have to share it. But this is, uh, I have to say, low qualifiers so far. It's going to be hard to beat this food. Chuck, everybody here, thank you. John Moles Meats. And it does say Roadkill Grill for a reason. People actually bring Roadkill in and deer and things they've shot, and he will prepare it for you to go home and freeze it, believe it or not, or cook it. So there you go. We'll see you. Uh, the next race is another four wide, Z-Max, Charlotte. If you got a spot you think you might like, let us know on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, we'll seek it out. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in about two weeks.